Hello, Dimitri. How are you? Hello, Thodoris. I'm pretty well, as usually. Now, now that we are together, I'm better than before. Okay. <laughs> so, we are Dimitri and Thodoris, an international broadcast that is called In the Air Tonight. We're trying to get into minds of artists from the past, from nowadays, and from the future. From the future? How we will do that? Haven't you watched Back to the Future movies? Yes, yes. but there, was, there were no artists in these movies. The, there were Chuck Berry, there were Van Allen, there were all these artists, especially ah, okay. in the so, first. Yeah, okay. I, yes. I, I thought you meant uh, uh, doing, doing some roles. Okay, not... another plagiarism for our broadcast. Okay. So, today we have something very special for you. We have the third uh, international, in a way, guest. Yes, of course. Another from, another, sorry, from, from another timetable. From another okay. timetable. So we far go... we had Australia, USA, and, and now, now we will go to Mexico. Mexico, guys. Mexico City. Mexico. So, we're going back to the future. A person so that sorry, is... We are going back to the future. Back okay. The future. To okay. do what? We have, we have uh, made a dive into the past okay. and we found for today's broadcast who okay. there is we found the bassist mainly and guitarist of uh, ex anathema duncan patterson hey, hello Tyson. duncan hey, hello, hello duncan hello how are you today i'm very hot i'm in northern uh, mexico uh, it's probably 38 degrees okay wow. so it's, it's hot here we, we, are like a, we, we are in the same mood as here yeah. in Athens, it's also too hot. I know Athens well. I've been many times to Athens and it's yes, yes, yes. so hot there. So <laughs> thank, I you, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's a great pleasure having you. Yeah. And uh, as we have said uh, to our intro, is another bridge of continents tonight yes. with you. As, as you've said, you are in Mexico, we are in Greece, we had also some guests all around the globe, and now it's the turn to be something like anathema today, <laughs> just, to make, <laughs> just to make the reference that will guide us tonight. Okay. Thank you, Duncan, for everything. I'm Dimitris. Thank you. The tall guy is Todoris, and we are about <laughs> to begin from our very, um, very top lists okay yes top yes, five yes. albums right that uh, that are inspirational for you or if it was something uh, like sweet memories for you yes let's start from right. number five well they won't be me top the, these are probably in me top 10 of all time okay i, I okay. don't have an order i think okay. everyone, okay. everyone sure, says sure. that don't they yeah. everyone says yeah yeah, yeah yeah of course yes um Especially when you listen to so much music and so much, so, so many years. I was into music since I was very small. I think I was probably f four years old, and I was going through my father's record collection and vinyls. And if I see Help, the Beatles, and they're all doing shapes <laughs> like this, and I'm, I'm like, yeah. this this looks funny. Yeah. So I asked them to put the vinyl on, and I was like, wow, wow, what's this? The dancing. And then I remembered the night before I came in. Track two came on the night before, yeah. and I was like, "Wow, this this is my favorite song. This is my <laughs> favorite song." That my father, my father, laughing, you know. I say, "You want to hear again? Yeah, put it back on with the needle, <laughs> and I'm dancing. I'm like that." My father played guitar, so he always had, had guitars in the house, and I, I remember picking up his guitar. It was, it was huge because it was absolutely <laughs> small, and I was trying to be the Beatles playing, and it it was just it was the first. The first thing I remember, the music being magic. The first time I felt felt the magic of music, and it was. I still love that song. It's one of my favorite songs to this day, and it's from the Help album. Yeah, <clears throat> that album has stayed with me for oh, more than forty years now. Yeah, <laughs> and it's when people say, "What's your favorite Beatles album?" I say, "Help." E even though maybe musically, if I was going to really think and analyze everything be revolver but because it was my very first you know 
experience with music it's, it's helped so that that will be number that, that i'm going to start with that um, number five yeah that's going to be I, the beatles help i must inform you that um, when somebody asks me which is uh, my favorite beatles album and i say help then he says okay i'll help you it's white album but i totally agree with you it's um, it's the one album that um, points a new kind of direction from rock and roll yeah, yeah definitely to something more serious to something else. yes yeah something else. But I, I like when I analyze it now from an adult point of view, and I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, with the Beatles is great. I, I love with the Beatles, but there's a lot of, of covers on it. Yeah, and yeah. Help, help has one cover version, I think, the yeah. Ringo Ringo song. Um, they were serious songwriters then. They were serious. They'd had number ones and they were superstars already. But yeah, it was it was that's when they meant business. I think that was the real. The real yeah. start. Of yes. Course. Okay. Let's go to number four. Number four. Oof, right. Well, I'm going to go with Celtic Frost into the oh. Pandemonium. Wow. Um, okay. <laughs> very, very nice album. That's a huge, huge influence on me. Um, For sure. It's the goth, the gothic influence on it, the symphonic influence, and usually I hate symphonic metal. I, I don't like it I just because it's so cliche the way it's done. Okay. But into the pandemonium, there's no cliches on the album. It's there's, especially for the time. If somebody made that album now, people say, "Oh, it's black metal. It's this. It's this." But at that time, there was no reference. It was there's nobody doing anything like that. It's, there's influences from Christian death. There's hip hop influences. There's yeah. the yeah thrash influence. The, the the main thrash thing. Um, nobody done anything. It was a it was a huge risk. For them, and I know the record company didn't like it at the time. And the record company didn't. That's, that time, yes, that time. <laughs> they didn't back them, and yeah. they, they didn't put them with the producer that understood the music. So, despite all of those facts, the obstacles, it's it's an amazing record. And I wonder if that helped it become such a good record. If, if it was much, they wanted Rich Rubin, I think, to produce it. I think that was the original choice. But the record company wouldn't pay the money because they had no faith in, in you know in, in the project. Maybe it wouldn't have been as good if they had if they had it easy. It was a struggle. It's a brilliant brilliant album. It's so innovative, uh, original, especially for the time. Yeah, of course. Uh, what about the band? Do you like the band uh, in general? Yeah, Shall yeah. Frost? Yeah, that's, yeah that's, because... that's my f favorite heavy metal band. Heavy. Yeah, yeah, because, because they are pioneers in yeah, yeah. Uh, in a way. Because indeed, uh, by, by the time this album uh, came out, it was uh, a very, very nice uh, piece of art for me. Yeah, yeah, it's pure art. Yeah, it's, it's different. For sure, for sure. Yeah. It is, and we it is have it. and we have the word Celtic that is so close to Duncan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's, sure. that's, that's it. For sure, for sure, yeah, okay. So when, number when three. I was young, I, I remember yeah, going yeah. Oh, first to the artwork, like Morbid Tales and stuff, I've seen the word, I was like, wow, I, I need to listen to this band. Before I knew anything about Thrash or anything. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, I loved the band name, I loved all the artwork and everything. And then when I listened to it, it's boom, what the fuck is yeah. this? You know, yeah, Great. The, the, the favorite metal band is the, of all time. Yeah. Okay. Nice mm -hmm. to hear that. Nice to hear that. When we have in our minds, what kind of music di did you play then? When uh, Into the Pandemonium was released? Yes. It, it was something was completely different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, was, a, it was completely different. I, I, I probably first heard that in 1988. So I was, I was just discovering yeah. heavy music at the time. Um, I may have had the electric guitar, but I first started playing acoustic guitar. My father's acoustic guitar, so I used to play like like medieval music, something like that. Yeah, and I knew some Beatles songs, the um, Pink Floyd, "Wish You Were Here," stuff like that. Yeah. So that was probably what I was playing when I I was like thirteen years, twelve, thirteen years <laughs> old. You know, so I was not yeah. a musician yet. Too okay. soft, too soft for Celtic Frost. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, they have the soft moments as well. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Okay, let's go to number three. Okay, man. This I've been going through in, in my head. I didn't. Look, I, I could put a million Pink Floyd albums, a million Beatles albums, Roger Waters, and everything. But just the things that I wanted to direct influence on me, really influence on me on my music and and in my life. And there's an album called Immortal Memory by Lisa Gerrard from Dead Can Dance okay, and yeah. an Irish composer called Patrick Cassidy. And it's it's like a soundtrack, soundtrack track kind of music, but there's something I found it in the in a record shop in Ireland, um, and it was a bargain, it was like three euros at the time. Oh. I thought, I'll, I'll buy this, you know. It's, it's it's the price of one beer, less less than one beer. So I thought, yeah, okay. And I got it home, and I listened to that every day for maybe two years. Every morning when I woke up, I'd put that on. <laughs> I'd make myself a chamomile tea, really strong with honey, and I'd do my work because I was running the record company at the time, and I'd work in the early mornings with that record on. And this, the first song is "Song of Amagen." is It's supposed to be the the very first ever song ever sung in Ireland ever of all time. It's an ancient poem. Oh. Translated from Gaelic, and um, it's there's some. I feel something that when I listen to this record, it takes me back. It takes me back in time, but beyond time, I can't can't describe it. It's, it's and it, it, it takes you back to your childhood, or not? No, it takes me back. I know to, you were you were older. Oh, okay. No, it takes me back before before. I don't ah, know. Okay, it takes okay. me somewhere else. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, it, so really, it's it's a really strong feeling that I don't get from any other records, and I own thousands of records and i've listened to thousands <laughs> loads of music and not nothing affects me like this this record does and i don't know why and i, I was going to write to her and say like this because i know she's into like frequencies and stuff and feeling rather than premeditated yeah. music yeah and she yeah. never used to use lyrics much but she uses lyrics lyrics on this record and patrick cassidy he wrote some stuff on the album because his father, his father passed away, so it's very, very heavy. Um, it's heavy feelings in the record. It takes me somewhere. That I can't really describe where it takes me, but it takes me somewhere. A great okay. uh, suggestion for our viewers. So yes, yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's and the end it, limit is for us too. For us too. I have never. Of course. It's an opportunity for us to to hear this this album. Yeah, yeah. Well, I hope you you get the same feeling from it because it's yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay. magic. Yeah, it's magic. <laughs> we'll inform we will you. see. We'll inform okay. You. <laughs> we will see. Okay. Let's go to number to two. number two. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go to um, something a bit more hard now. Uh, it's Fugazi, one of my favorite bands. Fugazi. Okay. okay. Post hardcore, post punk, or whatever. Yeah. I don't describe them in any way, but I know people need a description sometimes <laughs> when they don't know. When they haven't heard the actual music, they released an album called "In on the Kill Taker," um, and I remember the first time. I, I have the book here. I'll show you the book actually. <laughs> Can okay. you see that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. "In on the Kill Taker." Yeah, In on the Kill Taker. Okay. Yes. Well, this is a book written about the about the album, song by song, and everything. It's it's a great book. I read it on a plane in about phew, an hour. I was yeah. just into the book because it's one of my favorite records. It's it's in my top ten of all time. As an influence, it's not really a direct influence on my music, but I did cover one song off it. But I'd say my influences are from the bass player. But we we'll speak about that later. Uh, this album is so innovative. The two guitarists, I've never heard anything like it. It's something that shouldn't work. It shouldn't be compatible. They have like a rhythm section, reggae influenced, hardcore influenced, and then these two guitarists with one's really, really tight, and the other is stretchy and noisy and uh -huh. loose, and it just works. There's, there's something about this, it, and again, it's very original records, and it had a big impact on me. Okay, okay. Let's go to number one. Yes. Okay, well, this isn't the... This isn't my favorite album of all time, but it's yeah. it, again, it's in my top 10. It's Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, The Boatman's Call. It's a very laid back, very, qu not quiet, well, 
it, there's no, no really noisy parts in it. It doesn't go up tempo. It's relaxed. It's it's sad. It's about a breakup, a heavy breakup. Uh, it's piano and the bass lines in it, very hypnotic bass lines. The production is amazing on it. His lyrics is something else. Uh, everything in it, the violin, the orchestration, the, the feeling of it. And I think uh, to those uh, who are very familiar with Nick Cave's music, I think it's their favorite. It's, I, 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 believe people, it's, yeah. I believe it's the... Uh, it's a, an album that most of most of the listeners like uh, most. It should it should be. I, I think, think so. Yeah. I'm not so sure, but yes, maybe, maybe. It's yes. very poetic. It's well, very for, poetic. Yeah, it, the lyrics or something. It's the whole thing, the whole package. And Absolutely. when you understand, and, and, the, and the artist in general is uh, is that kind of an artist. It's a yeah. very very nice artist. Straight to the That's point. True. It's very simple, really, and it's just there's no complications. Straight to the point. There's a yes. good gospel influence in there. It's just it's piano emotional. vocals. Yeah, yeah, emotional, very, yeah. very, very, yeah. So that's yeah, that's number one in this. Okay, right? okay, very okay. So let, let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to section number two in a way. Okay. As uh, as you play the bass and the guitar too, we would like to share with us some uh, bass players or some guitar players that uh, you like or okay. you have been influenced. Uh, you, you can do you can do whatever you want a combination of uh, both uh, yeah. instruments. I okay. go with both. I, I was going to put mandolin in there, but this, I'd have a list too long. So <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Stick guitar and bass. Okay, okay, okay. okay. First, I'll go with the Fugazi bass player Joe Lally. Um, his he has a direct influence on my playing because he uses a pick most of the time, and. But he has, he likes a very deep sound, a lot of reggae influence. And I have a lot of dub influence in my playing because I listen to a lot of dub. I don't really have a, a heavy metal influence in my playing. I, I did when I was in the early days of Anathema, when we were playing kind of I Am Made and this kind of, kind of thing. But it, it's not my natural style. My natural yeah. style is deep, very deep bass. Um, and Joe from Fugazi, it's a big influence in that way because he reminds me of me. And um, it's simple, but when he, the dynamics need to be there, he knows how to do it. It's technical. Mm -hmm. He doesn't show off. He doesn't overplay. And I don't like doing that as a bass player. I don't like doing runs and stuff. It's just for the sake of musicianship. I, it's, I put the whole song as the most important thing, all the components of the song. So I'm going to put him as the influence in bass playing it was i, I could put roger waters there as well because it's very simplistic <laughs> but yeah. i like more the movements that joe joe makes so he's i'll put him first on my list now okay okay let's go to number four yes right. another I'll, choice yes. i'll do another bass player here and that's martin casey from the bad seeds nick cave for his work on the boatman's call it's a huge influence, uh, very simplistic, perfect dynamics, perfect choice of notes. It doesn't show off. There's no overplaying in it at all. It's, it reminds me of me again, what I wish, you know, if what I, I want is, I want to sound like him, his sound, the, the sound of the bass and everything. Uh, yeah. Just, just for his work on that album, I, I will put him in one of my top influences to just for okay. that one record. Okay, mm -hmm. number three. Right, yes. I'm going to move to guitarists now. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm yeah. going to go with Gregor McIntosh from Paradise West. Oh. Um, okay. He's one of the most unique and influential For like, sure. gu guitarists. And people don't speak, like, the, okay, the, the fanboys, the, the fans of Paradise West speak about him like a god, right? <laughs> but the musos and the people in the, the Drug scenes and music and say, oh, he's he's not a real guitarist and all that, but he is because he's very original. And his song, not only his playing, his choice of notes, the solos and things, the mel melodies, his songwriting, his songwriting is spawned a whole genre of music with gothic because mm -hmm. that that scene did not exist before the album came out. The gothic death 
death yeah, doom, yeah. gothic yeah, style yeah. metal. It yeah. didn't exist. And mm -hmm. because of him, that scene exists and he deserves a lot of respect. And he was a, a huge influence on us as a band in the early days. And sometimes he's been more of an influence to me on the stuff I've done with violins and stuff rather than the stuff I've played with guitars because it's the choice of notes rather than the instrumentation. But he, he's been a big influence in that way. Yeah, and he's very innovative and he, he deserves the respect. So he's going on the list of influences because he, he often gets I, overlooked. I think that you share something in common with Mr. The Martindos, uh, the bridge between genres, because uh, part, yes. the bridge yeah, yeah. between genres, uh, the transition between something different in their music, because I think that uh, from uh, the draconian times to I... post and uh, the next albums from that, Believe in Nothing, I think, uh, it's the title uh, album, yeah, yeah. And et cetera. It's, uh, it's like hearing uh, something very different in orchestration, yes. in yeah, the way yeah. of playing. Well, they had no fear that they, they weren't playing yeah. any games. Yeah. They, were, they were a very professional band. They've always been a very professional band, especially after, after Gothic. And they kind of yeah. played the game a bit commercial thing but they got huge and they, they yeah. deserved it um and they went they had no fear to move on and greg is very big into gothic music like myself so it, it was no big like he had no fear of not being metal anymore and being called a whim mm -hmm. stuff yeah, like yeah. that because that, i mean for me that all that macho stuff is <laughs> it's, it, it's it's comedy it's comedy for me you know it's i, I listen to so much music and stuff I like, like 80s pop I know Greg is big into 80s pop and New Wave as well. And the metal guys is like that, oh, Bronski beat, that's gay. You know, it's, it's, are <laughs> <laughs> we really sexism. at that point? Yeah. That's not music, it's sexism. Yes, yes, yes. There's, yes. Not, there's <laughs> life also in ABBA. There's yeah, life in yeah. Tears for Fears. Yes, of course. Yeah, <laughs> great. Tears for Fears, brilliant, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it, it, as in such a macho scene as, Okay, it's less now, but back in the day, it was very much. I remember it. I remember it being being called gay because we had romantic yeah. lyrics, you know, and they bring the sexuality into it because it's such a macho thing. No, that's but, music shaming. Music yeah, yeah, shaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, music shaming. For sure, but, for sure, that is. Yeah, yeah, same. They, they didn't have that. They didn't have that as well. So yeah, it's there's no fear there. I wouldn't call it brave because you have to be scared to be brave. There's no, just, just, just no fear exists there and it's great. You know, good, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we totally agree because we are fans of hard rock and metal music. We, yeah. do, yeah. we, do, love, we do love Manowar. Okay. Yeah, I do. I, I love Manowar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but we also love uh, Mick Cave, Tears for Fears, uh, yeah, yeah. Ambar yes. set, yeah. and uh, Cranberries and all that kind of stuff. Because music is all about hearing. Yeah, and not, music and, not, and Duncan, music has no boundaries. Exactly. If, if music is good, it has to be heard from everybody. Yep. Of course, okay. There we go. Everybody. Yeah. Okay. So we are Dimitri option two, uh, three. We are uh, at, uh, okay. So we've lost it. Uh, no, no, we, option, uh, no, no. It's option three. Option it, three. We'll go for three. We'll go for three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Right, no, I've done three already. Oh, I think <laughs> Joe Lally, Martin from the Bad Seeds. Ah, yeah, Jay, the, the game, the yeah, 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 sure, so yeah, yes, yes, yes. Thank yeah, God, thank right. God. Well, for two, yes, no. I'm going to switch yes. the guitar now. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's uh, go to number two. Tom G. Warrior from Celtic Trust. Okay. Very innovative guitarist, especially his yeah. solos, his leads. This, it reminds me of Christian Death. Parts, <laughs> but this, the, but as a as a as a songwriter, his guitar sound, guitar sound is something else. Nobody sounds. I I'd love to sound. I'd love a guitar sound like his, but I can't write them that type of riffs. <laughs> I, I wish I could, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll leave that to, to the master. Different. It's something different. It's something yeah, different. Yeah, for sure. Yes. Very innovative, and as a songwriter and a guitarist, a, a massive influence. A massive influence in dynamics and stuff, and the time changes he used. It's just brilliant. And, and you probably notice I'm big into people with new ideas and innovative musicians. And I don't care if 
it's angry mom's doing or whatever. It's it, the skills don't bother me. It's the it's up here up here that's important for me oh, for sure, as, a, for sure. as an influence. Yes. I, I know I know many people who can play Switch Out of Mind really fast, but they can't write songs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's as an influence, as a creator of music, it's 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 here that that's important for me. There's Tom's always, Warrior is no is is in my list. So. There's always BB King who plays two notes. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, of course, but it speaks. He speaks to your heart. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very yeah, and, so many, and so many others. Not only him, and so many others. Bibi King is uh, is the most uh, uh, the most precious example of simplicity. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. for sure. The Cure. Listen to the Cure songs. Yeah. Three yeah. chords, four chords, and course, amazing ti timeless songs. We it's... have watched them performing uh, last year in Greece. Really, I, it was I... uh, it was a gig. It was amazing. Wow. All I've never seen them live. I've never ever seen the Cure. Really? I'd love to see them. Yeah, it's, yeah me too. It's one band of mist. <laughs> yeah. Very I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Three hours. Three yeah, hours. Almost. Yeah. Almost. Three hours. Three I hours probably need a seat these days because I can't stand up because my back. <laughs> three hours. And they, in had, the and, uh, they had the hugest, uh, the hugest, uh, uh, yes, uh, um, the fans, the number of fans. Really? In uh, where they played, yes. Uh, how many? More than 30, 35, 35,000. Wow. Uh, 35,000. Uh, it was 30 uh, to 35,000 in a place uh, that uh, can hold it's uh, about, uh, 20, 25. 20, 25, 20, 25. 25. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was amazing, but think too crowded. <laughs> the, the last time I played in Greece, I think it played to 35 people. So <laughs> <laughs> it was with Anathema. No, oh, I was, no, I was uh, with the Irishman. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Yeah. So, do you remember the place? Right now, do you remember yes, the place? number one. I played so, at Ant Club in Athens. Ant Club. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. really? It's a, it's a one of the most historic places here in Athens. Yes. I love the venue. I've, I've played there a couple of times. I played there with Antimatter, one of the first gigs oh. we did, and there were many people there. It was it was packed, sold out. Antimatter. So. You have to know that antimatter had uh, an impact here in Greece. Yeah. To to the early fans of Anathema that uh, keep on uh, listening to the music that you uh, that you've created after that. Well, yeah, With... the, 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 well, I've done so much since then, and people yeah. kind of dropped off as time went. <laughs> but, um, but I remember at the time, at the time the first album came out, a, yeah. a lot of people in Greece were interested in in the antimatter yeah. stuff. Yeah, it was good. I remember playing there. We played up in Thessaloniki. Yeah. We pl played a Grenio or somewhere, a student place, and we, we played on the university steps. Okay. And I think the ticket price was like two euros, and we had free food <laughs> for everyone. That was great. Really great time. Yeah. It's my style of, I don't like the corporate, the commercial <laughs> stuff. I prefer stuff like that. It was, it was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Great time. It was a great time. It's nice to have uh, great memories of our country. <laughs> well, yeah, I spent a lot of time in Greece, so I know I, I have many friends still there. I don't see them often now because I'm in Mexico, but yeah, yeah I, I have good memories from there. Let's exchange tequila to Uzo. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't drink. I don't drink anymore. So okay. back in the day, yeah. I drank a lot of tequila in Greece. So, so. <laughs> and uh, Uzo okay. in Mexico. Yeah. I don't, yeah, those I, in Mexico, yes. I just I drink water here and electrolyte drinks now. I don't drink alcohol anymore. Okay, so. okay. Yeah. That's yeah. good for you. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very good for me. <laughs> Great it's man. Bad. Okay, let's go to number one of instrumentalists. Right. I'm gonna go with Sid Barrett. Sid Barrett, oh. Yeah. oh. As a composer and as a guitarist. Because he's one of my favorite guitarists. People if you mention Pink Floyd and guitars, everybody goes to Gilmore. Everyone goes straight to Gilmore, but Gilmore couldn't play like Sid Barrett. Nobody can play. Nobody could play like Sid Barrett. He is nobody sane. Could play nobody like can. No, nobody could. Um, nobody could he was very, very original. Again, I'll put that in there. Innovative, and even like I remember the backwards, the backwards solos on this on the solo albums. And I've read everything about Pink Floyd, every <laughs> book you can imagine. And the people working with him said he didn't have to sit and work out the notes. He, he knew how the songs went backwards, and he knew how it was going to sound when they put the reels back, play forwards again. 
and he was connected with the music a bit like Jimi Hendrix. Maybe it was the acid thing that made them senses really strong. I don't yeah. know, but they felt the music different than normal human beings. Yeah, and yeah. Sid had, had this connection, connection with the music and. His guitar playing is, is something else. He's a massive influence, Sir Barrett. Huge influence yeah, yeah. as well. I've done some yeah, stuff yeah. on keyboards, on the antimatter stuff. That was a huge, it was like a cross between Sir Barrett and Slayer. The, the choice <laughs> of notes he used. But that, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I put Sid there. Sid's going in number one. He deserves his Ooh, place. So. Very interesting okay. choice for number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, very interesting choice, yes. yes. He used he used to play music in shapes. I yeah, think yeah. that uh, you could see things yeah. when you hear the Bad playing. The yeah. early Pink Floyd albums are so influential to not to prog music but uh, to other kinds of music, ambient, yeah. electronica. It's uh, totally all these acid things that Sid Barrett used to um, dive in, yeah, make the, the music, yeah, yeah, the make the music be in shapes. Yeah, That's yeah. why Roger Waters was um, the mirror of that. And uh, he held it, Pink Floyd, to another dimension, which mm-hmm. has a bridge with Sid Barrett. And that's why Piper at the Gates of Dawn had that kind of impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah so innovative at the time. And they, yeah, yeah. they were huge Beatles fans, and the Beatles were innovative with the effects. And John Lennon was it with reverbs and delays and stuff like that, and c- cutting tape, tape loops, yeah, things like that. You know, is yeah, very the pioneers, the pioneers yeah. at the time. Pink Floyd, the early Pink Floyd, I think that are rubber soul with acid. With more acid, <laughs> with more, more acid, more acid. Yeah. <laughs> more I'm acid. sure the Beatles <laughs> went shy of it at the time. Yeah, yeah with more acid before before the um, the India stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have done with our top lists. Yes. Yeah, so so r- right now, right now, um, it would be very nice if you can uh, share with us some. Um, of course, if you if you can remember some funny moments. From your career, funny Are there any funny, a, yeah. any funny moments that you want to share with us? Oof, <laughs> Does that, that's, that's too many stories. You know, I don't know where oh, to start. Okay. It, it, yeah. That's great. No, no, we are here for you. You can tell us two or three or four or five. A, I'd need a prompt sure. for this with uh, God's funny stories. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> When we were recording, I think we were recording Pentecost 3 with Anathema, the second EP. And um, a few of the guys were smoking dope in the studio. Yeah. And one, one of the guys was very greedy he, and he didn't want to pay. And he would sit next to the guy smoking, you know. Who was that guy? I, I'm, not say, I'm not saying any names. I'm not getting of anyone else. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll stick okay. to the story. <laughs> And I remember the day, it was the FA Cup final day, and Manchester United beat Chelsea 4 0, I think. Anyway. Go Red, go Red. So we're going, well, I'm Everton, I hate them, but I just remember okay, this. Okay, okay. I know the, the exact date. Anyway, so the, the guys got tired paying for everything, and this, this guy wouldn't pay for, for the weed. And somebody put dog shit in a cigarette <laughs> and oh. left it. In, left it in the ashtray and the, the greedy guy came in and said like is that a joint and everyone's like yeah yeah and he said why isn't anyone smoking he said ah it's shit yeah. <laughs> uh, literally. Literally. literally anyway yeah, literally, yes. <laughs> so he puts it in his puts it in his mouth and lights it and the smell the smell was just, it was just burning dog literally burning dog shit and everyone's like in the room what the fuck now and i could put my head out the window and the, the engineer from the recording studio is like that. Is somebody eating McDonald's in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. We had also an advertisement here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but afterwards, we were worried. We think it can't be healthy. Well, I don't think smoking anything is healthy. 
But I've heard stories about people going blind if they t- if they touch dog shit. <laughs> and we thought maybe he's going to go blind and it's our fault. And you know we we were worried <laughs> so, all night. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> any any funny incident on stage? Um, oof, plenty. I remember we were in the Netherlands. I think it was the Dynamo Club, and Jamie Jamie Cavana was doing doing the lights for us. And it was a very high stage, and I have a thing with vertical. I am, um, I love heights, but my brain doesn't like heights, so it's kind of a paradox. Anyway, the, the stage is very high in this venue, and I'm stood there, so I'm not going very near the front because I, I can see the strop going right down. And there's a bass break in what song? There's a song on the Silent Enigma with a with a bass break, and there's no other instruments, there's no drums. So I'm getting ready for this part because if I make a mistake, it looks it sounds stupid and I look stupid. And I, so I'm, I'm, I've got it in my brain, right, get this right, get this right. And as soon as it's time for the bass break, Jamie turns all the lights off. It's black. <laughs> and I can't see oh. anything. And in a split second, I'm worried about falling off the stage because it's so high. And I'm thinking, shit, which, which notes do I... I can't see the notes on the fretboard. I'm... My, my legs started to, to move like that, and I was going, but nobody could see me because because it was pitch black. Well, yeah, it's pitch black. I, I was yeah. shaking. I was, I was like, oh my god, you fucking bastard! And <laughs> but I, ma- I managed to play it right, and then the drums kicked in, the lights came on, and I fought. And I was just staring at Jamie <laughs> for the next three songs. Like, don't ever fucking do that again. <laughs> oh, god. Terrible. terrible. <laughs> You don't have you don't have this in video. Um, if in I did, moment, I, if I did, I wouldn't pass you the link. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, Duncan, uh, 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 have you ever visited uh, Greece? Have many I what? Times. Visited Greece many many times. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe that due to Vertigo, you, you haven't been in Sadorini. No, 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 never been. I've he- I've heard good stories from my friends yeah, from England. Yeah. They, they go- it's it's one of the best islands we have, and uh, for sure, uh, sometime you can go there if you want. But okay, I, I'd love to go back to Greece, but um, it's difficult enough to go back to England these days. So yeah. maybe in the yeah, future, yeah, maybe just put my feet up, relax. But I don't like if I go. To another country now. I want to go somewhere cold because it's yeah. it's hot here. Yeah. So <laughs> I'd rather go to yeah, Scotland yeah. or somewhere, you know. But yeah, yeah. I do. I, I miss Greece. I, I had some great times. I got some great memories from from Greece. We miss you too. We miss uh, you too, man. As Duncan, as uh, as we talk about Greece, uh, in the past you have participated in two Greek bands. I played with a band called, called Web. Yes. Web. Um, and yeah. I I played on their album. And I, I played live with them in yes, Ant Club. Yes. I think it was Ant no, Club. My, uh, my question is, are you familiar right now with the Greek scene? Are you, um, or it was just a, a participation in their album? I'm, I'm not familiar with any any scene at the moment. And oh, I, okay. I, I haven't been for, for a long time, uh, mm-hmm. any specific scene. I remember when I, used to, when I used to go to Athens, I used to always meet up at Sakis from Rotten Christ. He's a good Sakis, friend. Yes. He was a good good friend with me. He, he helped me. He used to get, get me tickets for concerts and stuff like that. <laughs> and he'd always invite me, say, if you need anything, Duncan. And he's a real, he's the real underground spirit guy. He's the real deal, Sarkis. Yes. Um, yeah. He's told me many stories, and I have, I have a lot of respect for him. But I, I don't know much of the Greek scene mm-hmm. apart from them, really. Uh, and, and my friends from the bands, the, from like Web, I was playing with them. and. I hung out with the guitarists. I used to stay in his house when I stayed in Athens. So, but I don't know much much else about the Greek okay, bands. Okay, um, okay, we are good. Yes, okay. I have to ask you. I have to ask you something now from the um, from the early days. Okay, uh, I'm a big fan of Anathema's music, uh, and the, the first albums, the EPs, and also after the transition. I think that you are um, the most um, important link to this transition. You well, have been, uh, you yeah. are, yeah, you are uh, the one that was uh, in this bridge from the start 
to eternity and uh, alternative four. Well, yeah. I, what I, happened was um, yeah. just before eternity, after after the Silent Enigma, like uh, Danny was the main the main songwriter on, on everything up until then, and I didn't write much on the Silent Enigma. I wrote I think, three tracks three tracks on the song, it's an enigma. And then I, 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 I just had this energy for, for writing music and, but my style is very gothic, you know, and beforehand it being really heavy, the metal stuff with harmonies and stuff. And we were looking to go in the, to, to progress even more, go in a different direction to do, do something. And I had these, these ideas and, it just, I just for eternity, it came so so quickly. Yeah. The, the three eternity parts, far away, all that the stuff. And I, I look back now and see the lyrics, and I, I, I I'm not very proud of them. I, I, but I was, <laughs> I was still a teenager. I was a teenager at the time, so you know, it was, it was my first my first time doing it. But some of the music is is some of my favourite music I've written because it was so pure at the time. I was there's no nothing was premeditated it's just what came out and i said hey i think we should we need to tune up the guitars and <laughs> I, I was in the band with two guitarists tuned down to b and they were like no we, we're heavy we're really the heavy heavy b note i said okay but after eternity and i'll tell this what i said we're tuning up to we're tuning up to e <laughs> we're not staying in b <laughs> but um yeah that that was the, that that changed i think the big change was it eternity alternative four? That was the big change. Alternative four brought things right up, yeah. and we got, we got noticed by a lot, a lot more people. And it wasn't intentional to be um, commercial or anything like that. M maybe empty is the only song yeah. Yeah. that I thought. But this is short. It's got a chorus, but it's it's not. Gonna, it's talking about killing yourself. It's not going to get in the charts, so it's not commercial. Yeah, you know. But it's. It's a bit too commercial for me. For, no. But I think it's okay. I, I understand why people like it, but it's not really my style. But I, I wrote that in like one hour. So <laughs> it's, it's, I don't okay. know. It's sometimes most, things happen like that, you know. The most lovable song uh, of Anathema in Greece, um, I think it's uh, Fragile Dreams from yeah, I've I've heard heard it The Midrash don't think it is. It, it is. is. It is. It is. <laughs> it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. But that's the catch. That's the catchy one. It's, it's the. Yeah. It has the nice chorus and the. It's, it's very gothic sounding as well. You know, it's it's much. Yeah, it's, it is. It, it's funny it my is. style actually, even though I didn't yeah. write it. It's the the, the verses, and, and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah, I've heard that many many cafes in Greece and many yeah. bars and. I, I used to go into bars in Athens and the DJ. Some of the say, oh, it's it's in from Anathema. <laughs> and they, they put st stuff off in judgments and, and people were coming up to me smiling and saying, have you heard this? And I was like, that, no, because I've never, li I've never listened to judgments. I don't, I don't know. If, I've heard the songs live, but I don't know how the album sounds. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I have no idea. They said, ah, it's, it's your band. I said, it's not my band. <laughs> okay. I, agree. I, I miss Greece, though. It's, it's funny. Like, <laughs> okay, you should come. You should come as soon as possible. I will. I, will, I, I believe yeah. after this is uh, coronavirus infection you can come yeah let's see let's see okay so, i missed the food Doris, i missed the so, food increase it's, it's nice yeah <laughs> so Doris, as we're going to the end of our podcast yes thank you thank you very much well, thanks for having me thanks for inviting me thank you very much so Doris, we'll do some final questions for you oh, yes no, no. Uh, my final question is: um, Me and Dimitris are uh, very familiar, and we like very, very much uh, soundtracks. Oh, okay. And uh, our question is: As in the past, uh, your music was used for a soundtrack. Uh, do you have any thoughts of making a soundtrack on your own? I'd, I'd love to. It's, uh, I'd, when I did the Eternity Suite. I sent it to many companies uh, to, to see and the pub, my publishing company, see if they can get me any work with soundtracks. Um, and then I was offered something on a TV show, a very f famous TV show in the UK called Holby City. 
but they wanted to use lost control in, instrumental version and it was very difficult and they they dealt with the the, the management from anathema and be, because they would make no money from it i don't think it ever got followed up because because i wrote the song and i'm not managed by them and nobody ever contacted me after that to sort it out which is a pity but that's that's the way things go there's no underground spirits with the big big management companies anyway okay. but that's something i'd love to do but i don't want to i don't want to get involved with big big management companies it's it's the opposite of what i'm into it's i'm more of, i've got more of a punk spirit more more hardcore diy i think i don't i don't like them people i don't like the people who monopolize and prevent other people from progressing with the, with the art and with the music I, i'm against them so yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get involved with them and that's that's what a lot of people don't understand about me they said oh why haven't you sold more records why haven't you gone to big companies it's because i don't want to because i, I, I want to sell more records I, I, i'm not going to sell my ass to do it and mm -hmm. but with the soundtrack thing i i do have a few friends who do that um a very good friend of mine in ireland called Dara, Dara O'Toole, great musician, great composer, a conductor. He's worked with U2. Um, mm -hmm. He's worked on some, some great soundtracks. And he said he's going to help me. But then after I did the Eternity Suites, I lost interest. I, I didn't have the energy for music for a few years. And I was out here in Mexico, and I, I wasn't doing anything. I, just, I didn't feel the music. And I was worried that it never came back, but it did. It did come back. It came back about maybe two, two, two years ago. And I've kind of def defrosted. You know, I've, I, I'm feeling things again. I've, I've, I stopped drinking. I stopped fighting with people. And, you know, it's, I've, I'm back to being me again, but like I was many years ago. So I've got the passion back for music now. So I need to okay. get back in touch with people because I, I, this is the first interview I've done for maybe six years. Oh, okay. We are so honored so, for that. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so yeah, you have some sorry, plans. Doris, so Doris, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. but I had to ask something about that. Uh, it's uh, first of all, congratulations for any decisions you've made all these years for yourself at first, okay? And I think that it's obvious when you find the way to go and find yourself, then music appears. Yeah, and that's yeah. why. So, and that's why. You feel the music again, and yeah, uh, um, and I'm so glad for you, man, because I'm a, I'm a musician too, and I totally understand what you say right now. Yeah, you get blocked. I have met so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get blocked from somehow, and and it's sad because I, all the time I, I was aware, I was like, because usually before that I'd, I'd always have ideas in my head, and I'd always be creating something. I'd always have a notepad scribbling things down with a pencil. But then for years, I just didn't. I had no interest. I'd be, oh, I'm, I'm hungry. Uh, let's let's go to a bar. And then I'd be out mm -hmm. all night, and then I'd sleep. And then it was just a spiral like that. And, and it's, it's, it, it's not like it was straight yeah. before that, you know. But there's something in me. I, I think I, I was just under too much pressure for years. And I wasn't getting any help. And there was obstacles, obstacles, obstacles in everything I was trying to do. And I ended up... When I actually started feeling the music again, I thought the only way to, re to remove these obstacles is to remove everybody, everybody out the way. All the companies, any musicians who fancied being famous and tagged along with me to do so, I've, I've got away from everybody and cut it and start afresh, starting with me and then get the right people involved. And that's, that's the, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm feeling good about it. Rebooting, rebooting, yeah. So I, I you have say yeah, so one so last. So. Sorry, sorry, for yeah. one last time. Okay. Um, I think that we live in times that uh, you can do anything you want with your music. So it's too liberating for you, because we have yeah. all the streaming services. We have YouTube. We have uh, all YouTube, this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. So you are too free to do whatever you want. For yourself, at first, of course. Yep, that's what. And that's, that's why, true. and we are here to accept your music, man. Your no, new music. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, uh, well thank done. you, thank you for everything you've done in the past, and thank you for everything you'll do in the future. 
thanks. Uh, well, and, I hope okay, we like it. And your, your yeah. future will be... Uh, do, do you have any plans for your future? Are you uh, preparing anything? I have a new record written. I was going to go into the studio in March, March, April, and then this okay. co coronavirus thing hit the world. And the, the guy in the studio said, if you want to come now, but I, I'm not taking any risks. I'm staying here. I have a, a young baby now. So oh. I'm looking after him every day. And I have to take time off yeah. from him. And it's it's a risk at the moment because it's not really safe here with the virus. Uh, up, up where I am, the numbers are quite low, but I'm, I'm not taking any risks. I stay in. I, I, I go and buy food and that, but I don't go far. And I'm not going to sit in the studio for 12 hours yeah. worried about him. So <laughs> I'm going to wait till everything's, everything's safe. And then I can go in with a clear head and concentrate on the music. But I have I have an album of five songs, the quite long songs. Um, it's it's my style, piano in there. There's acoustics. There's there's not much electric guitar in this. But I have another project with Darren Darren White, the original singer from Anathema. Cool. And we're gonna do a seven inch together, two two or oh. three songs, and it's more it's more underground. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's okay. there's a lot of punk influence in there, um, punk and gothic influence in there. Um, so we're, we're getting that together at the moment. But again, we need the world to become a bit more normal before we can start working. I'm sorry. looking forward. I'm looking forward. <coughs> sorry, really sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm okay. I'm look, really sorry. I'm looking forward to have this seven inch vinyl in my collection. So am I. <laughs> It's my favorite format. It's my favorite format yeah, of records. So I love seven inches. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Duncan, thank you for everything, man. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for inviting me and giving me coverage because thank you so amazing. much. You know, we are, it was a, we are a great big, pleasure. We thank are big you. fans, and we, we were big fans, and now we are bigger. Okay. Ah, that's great. <laughs> nice one. Thank you. Take it we easy. Hope to see you. We hope to see you soon back in Greece, man. Me too. I'll come and see you one day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. So, so Dimitris, that uh, that was Duncan Patterson. Uh, I think uh, he's a very interesting art artist. Not uh, only interesting, but uh, his life, his career, and his uh, potential for the future. Yes, especially the potential. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting because uh, we found uh, somebody that is not on uh, the front row of today's uh, yes. music industry. And I think, according to his words, uh, he doesn't want so much to be in the front row. Of course, and uh, that's an answer why we have uh, lost him for mm -hmm. almost uh, for almost two decades. But uh, that's our first show yeah, for we, an artist. We ha yeah. Sorry, we haven't lost him. No, he was there. Okay, we, ha but, uh, we, have, we have lost him from the front row that he ah, could yes. easily be in. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Okay. So, Duncan told us about uh, Anathema, told us mm -hmm. about uh, his uh, next projects after Anathema, and he's told us about his personal life and uh, yes. his personal interests. And we have finally an answer. What happens to a person that is uh, almost totally successful in what he's doing, but he's taking an, mm -hmm. um, a path, a different path to the solidarity? Yes, and uh, Duncan is a perfect example uh, for that kind of musicians that uh, chose this path of being. Indeed. And uh, what I liked uh, from him was uh, the fact that he's so open-minded in, uh, in his musical interests. Of course, of course. He's he had done five, so many things. His top five, were, were, all, both top fives were uh, so interesting. A very, a very um, similar conversation to mm. the one we've made with artists that uh, have chosen a path uh, outside of music industry yes, yes, yes. nowadays. But as we, we've listened to Duncan, uh, there is a future to his music. And that's uh, what made us uh, very, um, uh, very kind, very keen to what's mm -hmm. happening in his mind. Indeed, indeed. So... Yeah. That was for today. That was for tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching us. Thank you. It was another episode of of In the Air Tonight. Okay. It with... was in, with Duncan Patterson and, and you and me. Don't...
Tondoris yeah. and Dimitris. Yeah. See you next time. Please subscribe. Okay. Subscribe here and find all the previous videos towards them. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Good night. Bye bye. bye.